Hello there, and thanks for watching how to create an AP bill in Acumatica. So there's actually two, this is a two-parter, um, but in this part, we're just gonna create a bill representing, uh, for example, a utility charge. Um, later, there's another part where we're going to enter an AP bill where we match it up to a purchase receipt uh, from a purchase order from the vendor. So here we'll go into our payables and we'll say new bill. And we have our new bill screen here. So we'll go through, we'll put the date of the bill. So let's say it was on the 8th. We'll enter in the vendor's reference number on their bill, their invoice number. We can optionally give it a description. This can be helpful because it shows throughout the system in the um, vendor detail screen and areas when you're trying to research bills. So we can say this is a utility bill for January. And then we can search for a vendor. Um, you've seen me type in the search right here, but I'm gonna press F3 and I'm gonna do a search from here. So we can come in here and type in util and it found Mid-City Utilities. Okay, so now we'll tab down. Our vendor preferences show that this vendor normally gives us 30 day terms, um, but we could keep that and still override the due date if we need to. So whatever the specific due date is on the bill, we can override it. And the other thing that the vendor holds is if we tab down here to our first line item, there's a couple of things we can do here. First off, we can use an inventory ID, a non-stock inventory ID, to basically pull up the description of what we may be posting for this bill. So for example, we could have a non-stock item called utility that basically um, it'll get filled in if I typed in utility here, it would get filled in. But that's a preference that some people like to do. But moreover, for the bill, I can go over here to my extended cost and simply enter the bill. So it's $550. And then the I can enter the GL account. So notice to the right of it, it's already telling me that this is utilities. That's the GL account. If I press F3 again, I can change my expense account here. Now this expense account came in from the vendor. So on the GL accounts tab of the vendor, it pulls in the default expense account if it's in there. Okay. Uh, this demo company has sub accounts. So that gives us the ability to code this to a specific product if it mattered. In this case, utilities don't really matter based on product necessarily. And then the second segment of this is department. So for this, you know, maybe I have my corporate paying one utility bill. Maybe I'm breaking it out. I could break it out to multiple line items. Um, but uh, maybe support and operations are in a different office. They get a different utility bill and I would pick that. In this case, I'm just going to say zero. And if you're using project accounting, this allows you to code this to a specific project. Utilities is not necessarily something you might code to a project specifically, but you can code a bill to a specific project simply by looking it up. So this might be this particular project. And then your secondary thing would be the task that project is um, not allowed to be used in this expense account. Okay. So now once we're done, we can simply take it off hold. The, the fact that it's on hold by default is a preference we can turn off. But we'll match up our amount here. This is a precaution to make sure that they balance, that all your line items here balance, also a preference. And we'll release this. Okay, so now this bill is entered into the system. It's in the vendor's aging. And we have a separate tutorial coming up with regards to how to look up uh, vendor aging and research bills. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please see the contact slide at the end of the video.